I wanted to make a quick video um, documenting this process and really helping other people out and serving as a reminder for myself when I do this job again. But um, from what I understand, GL 1500s, whether you have the Valkyrie, Goldwing, um, they have these clutch packs are like centered and there's this very specific way and you're supposed to have very specific Honda tools um, to do to separate the plates and the discs and to um, disassemble and reassemble. So I um, wanted to take a moment to share some tips and tricks, I guess, to make the, the job a little bit more simple. But um, anyway, the good news is for what I specifically had was Valkyrie Interstate. Um, great customer that I've been working with for a while now. Um, Really nice bike, a lot invested into it, and uh, unfortunately it just sat for a bit. So um, I've got some other Valkyrie videos of tune-ups, and I did his six carburetors and um, things of that nature. But anyway, the clutch needed to be done. So um, if you're going to tackle this job, it's going to be about $375.00 if you order the parts directly from Honda, which if you're going to go all the way like that, it's probably the cheapest way to do it. Um, unless you're going to go with like an EVC kit or something like that. But then you're mixing parts. Um, so just, just be weary of that. Uh, because even if you get a full kit of friction and uh, plates, you still have to replace certain parts as you go, which means you're going to order them from Honda anyway, which, you know, kind of leaves it up in the air as if, well, why not just go all OEM if you're going to do, you know, certain Honda replacement parts anyway. But um, this is a list of everything that I ordered on Partzilla and um, came in such a big box because you had to have the, the gasket. And then on the other side of the box, I did this to serve as a bit of a memory jogger for myself as I took the, the clutch cover off, um, where the bolts go. And these bolts up here are very difficult to get to. Um, so I have a relatively slender figure, and I'm able to reach my arm up underneath the, the frame and into that area, but... Uh, just be prepared to have pretty much every type of 10 millimeter tool um, out to include offset wrenches, uh, swivels, quarter inch drive stuff. Um, if you expect you'll be able to get those 10 millimeter bolts um, off and then on is like a whole nother story. But the good thing is once you have it off, you kind of know where exactly what's going on and then mentally it's easier putting it back, uh, putting it back on. But um, anyway. So, a couple uh, tips here. In the center, there is a lifter piece which has grooves. And one tip is when you're putting it back together, you'll be fooled. It doesn't want to seat all the way into the center of the clutch um, lifter plate. So what the manual says is if it doesn't see to re-loosen um, these bolts and then twist and push to, um, to make it seat, which is what I did, and ultimately it did seat. But you will be fooled because you'll think it's seated all the way, but it must be um, you know, all the way down into the lifter plate. Um, so don't mess that guy up. That's a big deal. Um, this is what I ordered, but yeah, here's your clutch pack. I recommend ordering every single one, including the, the $55 plate up here and the special plate. Um, it's a big cost, but honestly, if you're going to spend the time to do the job, you should just get everything. Um, you have to get a new lock nut. I wouldn't do this without, because this is a staked, a staked lock nut. So you have to unstake it to get it off. And obviously it's being contorted while you're doing that. So you might as well just start fresh and then uh, restake it when you're done, or when you're putting it back together. Um, I replaced this bearing for the customer. That's what he wanted to do. His was okay. Um, but again, it's just eight to nine, ten dollar insurance as far as I'm concerned. This is that lifter piece I was talking about. It's got a circlip. The circlip goes to the rear of the, the motorcycle. So just be aware of that. Um, the 
only piece that I did not get from Honda that I probably would have gotten if I did this again was this snap ring, which will be discussed more uh, later in the video. Um, the one I you well, the one that came off and went back on is completely fine, but based on what you have to do to get this on and off, I, I don't know what it costs, but I'm sure it's less than ten dollars. And honestly, if it was twelve, I'd still probably buy it if I did this job again, um, just because it it would give me peace of mind to have another one. Um, and then I did replace his uh, clutch spring. Um, these dowels, there's four total. Two go into the cover and two go into the slave cylinder body. Um, his were okay. and He's got 40-something thousand miles on the bike. I replaced them, but um, if you're just trying to be on the cheaper side and safe, I'd probably get two. I mean, they're only like a dollar each. I replaced this oil seal that goes into the cover. I think you should do that if you're going to be in there. And then I rebuilt a slave cylinder. Um, this I actually did not go through Honda. I bought, I think, a K&L kit for like 18 or 20 bucks. Um, oh, and you have to get a gasket. Don't yeah, You're not going to be able to reuse the gasket, so make sure you get a gasket. Um, the manual says not to remove the slave cylinder. I highly recommend doing that. It'll make your life um, significantly easier when you're trying to get the clutch pack in and out. Um, the video is going to show a way to do this without having the special Honda tools. Um, 10 millimeter bolts, I already talked about that for the cover itself. Make sure you have an offset wrench and quarter inch drive uh, sockets so you can get in there and a, a ratchet that swivels uh, or pivots I should say, like has an elbow will make your life a lot easier. When you're putting the plates back on to the clutch center, the, the special plate, um, the one I talked about a second ago, it has to go on in a very specific position. There are little circles that um, discuss that, or that are discussed in the manual. There are little symbols that show you where it goes. It has to be put on that way, so don't forget to do that. Uh, I've talked about the clutch center lock nut being staked. Um, the pressure plate, this caught me off guard, and I did not see anything about this in the manual. There are four holes uh, for the pressure plate to go into the clutch center, and it will only go. It will only full fully seat um, in two of the four positions, and it, it's it's obvious if you know, but if you don't know, it's not obvious. If that makes sense, so. Make sure you put the pressure plate in one way and then rotate it 90 degrees and you'll see what I'm talking about. But I haven't seen anything about that online and I haven't seen anything about that in the manual. And that's a pretty important detail. Uh, otherwise, you're going to be scratching your head wondering what's wrong. And um, that's it. Enjoy the video. I hope this helps you. Um, take your time. It's a matter of patience. You have to do... I shouldn't say you have to... You have to contort your arm certain ways to get to certain things underneath the bike and uh, I certainly hope if you do this you have a motorcycle lift because to do this on your back underneath the bike would probably be extremely um, frustrating. So Honda made this extremely difficult, not extremely difficult, but um, extremely motivating to do this job using their tools or the Honda dealership. Um, you know, you do your due diligence and you read through the manual and you figure out what you need. And I'm always uh, disappointed when it's like, oh yeah, do this job, but you're gonna need to spend $150 in Honda, Yamaha, Suzuki, Kawasaki special tools that you'll probably buy and use like two or three times in your entire life. Um, so, you know, I, it kind of disappoints me that those tools exist, but I'm not the engineer. Don't know, don't care, but I always, try to make a tool um, that's not too Mickey Mouse um, because you want to be cost efficient but you also can't uh, break something or disassemble or reassemble it incorrectly. So with these flat sixes, the transmission is, or not the transmission, the clutch is down here. So what you're typically 
seeing in the motorcycling world is um, side cover. Motorcycle side cover, pull it off after you drain the oil, and then start pulling all the plates out. So the way that this is designed for these 1500s or these flat six motors or whatever is that this clutch pack has to be assembled prior to actually putting it up into the outer housing um, where you typically just put in, in alternating plate by plate or excuse me plate by disc plate by disc or uh, vice versa friction only on the outside but this you have to assemble completely and then you pop it in there so whatever no big deal right well the only way to assemble it is under enough hydraulic or pneumatic pressure squeezing them together because there's a snap ring a collar and a, a, a clutch spring that holds it all together and in order to get the snap ring on you have to put it up un, under enough pressure um, and you can't do it while you're trying to mount it to the motorcycle I don't think it's possible to do it that way you have to use some sort of tool um, so okay well what's the big deal with that the problem is you need to have this over there to align the discs otherwise it won't go in so it's kind of a 50 50 thing like you can put it together over on the bench but then the discs aren't aligned perfectly so then it's together and then you go to put it in and it won't go in because these aren't aligned properly well on the other side of that coin okay so let's get them aligned properly so you go over there and you put them in and you align them well now you can't get them stuck in that aligned position to put to reassemble the rest of the the clutch so they make a tool, Honda makes a tool that um, it's, from what I've gathered, it's basically like $150 investment to get the piece that, that helps you compress this together. You still need some sort of hydraulic or pneumatic pressure source of your own. And then the equivalent of what I've done here with a piece of um, straight edge. But basically the first tool you need is you need a way to, once you get it up into uh, the outer and the housing, and it's all aligned properly, you need a way to, to freeze that. And what I've done here is I've run a piece of uh, aluminum or a piece of metal across and there's threaded holes here, there's four of them, I've used two of them, to basically uh, drag the inner back to the pressure plate. So the pressure plate and the inner, which is the other side of the thread, they're, they're sandwiching the plates together right now in the discs so they won't move. Um, so anyway, you know, you can buy four of the pins for $20 each, or you can get a couple of M6 bolts and whatever this costs, um, just a scrap metal. So then, you know, now this should be somewhat good to go, and I had to think about this. So now you need a way... To compress this this entire assembly because you have three pieces that need to you have three pieces that need to come together with the rest of this to make this work and what you do here is this is the clutch spring that goes on and this is the, the uh, retainer for the um, uh, snap ring and then basically this clutch spring and this retainer have to go in toward the clutch to to show the channel which is down here for the snap ring and the only way to do that is under a lot of hydraulic or pneumatic pressure um, and that's how that goes so now how do you squeeze these together and leave yourself access to get a pair of snap ring pliers which oh by the way straight won't work and 90 won't work you have to have 45 for the setup that i used how do you find a way to squeeze these together 
and leave yourself access to that. And it took me a lot of thinking and um, walking around the, the garage to figure out that if you use a Harley Davidson oil filter socket, it gives you the correct circumference to put enough pressure on the spring. Um, and also there's a window so you can squeeze a pair of snap ring pliers in here to uh, spread. And then from there, you should use some sort of pressure. I decided to use a vise. So from here, I elected to basically put this edge against the wood, and then this guy covers this. And what it's doing is once you start to crank down, it'll hold it in place once you obviously make contact and put a little pressure on there. But ultimately what it will do is this will put pressure on the clutch spring to make it collapse. So you can put this snap ring in the channel down there underneath the spring. Alright, so this is another nerve-wracking part of the experience, but uh, the snap ring is its down there. I've been using a magnet to get it up into position. So there's the snap ring. The manual says to basically compress this just enough with just enough pressure. I mean, that's like literally what the manual says. Um, to make it accessible. My battery's dead on my flashlight. So the first time you're trying to figure out what just enough pressure means, you feel like you're gonna break something, which is always a lovely feeling. But if you, if you put slow and consistent even pressure on it, you'll see it collapse. You'll, you'll see the compression occur. And then it's the same guidance from there as what I discussed with fork seals. You're visually checking and inspecting um, by pushing back the retainer that there is indeed space for the snap ring to get into that channel. Um, that's kind of how you gauge like what is enough pressure because you feel like you're going to break something when you're putting the pressure on it. Um, but you have to compress it, um, otherwise you're not going to be able to do this. So with this setup, I've had to use 45 degree snap ring, or 45 degree end snap ring pliers um, because straight will not clear the oil filter socket and neither will 90. So the trick here is to kind of tilt the top back toward you and get the bottom seated underneath. And then once you spread it wide enough, so to speak, you can rotate the front over into the channel like so. I'm gonna, I'm gonna of course inspect with a flashlight, which I will get. All right, so back underneath the bike. Um, so this is all secure now. This uh, snap ring, is going to hold everything together. So I could take this off and in theory it should not move the plates. It should not allow the plates to move and it should pop right in there. Um, I am going to leave this on because I have the ability to get it off once it's in position. So I'm going to leave this on just as an added safety of like don't let anything move because then you have to do it all over again. You have to take this apart, put everything back in, cinch it back together and then take it back to whatever source you're going to use to put it back together uh, so you can get to where we're at now a um, couple things need to happen here before i put this guy back together number one i didn't clean this gasket seating surface yet so i gotta do that um, so the install will not be on tape but this washer has to be on here there's a washer right there Make sure you seat that per the manual before you try to put this guy in. Otherwise, you're gonna be doing it all over again. There's an oil strainer that goes in here too, in this position. It's a little black plastic circle. Don't forget that. 
And then um, for, as for the fasteners, two or three of them are extremely difficult to get to. Um, so offset 10 millimeter, but this is kind of a good strategy that worked for me. Uh, I usually do this when I have to take apart a case cover or some sort of cover that I've never dealt with before. And then I elected to remove the slave cylinder. Um, the manual says not to, but it is significantly easier to uh, maneuver this up into there without having to mess with the slave cylinder. Because it keeps like falling into your way no matter where you position it, it just keeps getting in your way. So. Um, I would imagine if you're doing a clutch rebuild, you're going to rebuild or you're going to rebleed the clutch system anyway. So it is what it 